Hi, I'm Naisha McCauley and you're watching AccessTV.org. Candid Conversations with Daryl Fitzgerald is a show where you will learn something new. It's a show for the courageous and want to be engaged. A show where we discuss any issue that affects the lives of people. And a show where we take inventory of our lives decisions. Welcome to Candid Conversation with Daryl Fitzgerald. Welcome to the show, Candid Conversations with Daryl Fitzgerald Jr. The show where we explore the essential truths of a matter, the show where we do not sugarcoat, the show where we ask the hard questions that our viewers want to know. On this show, we're going to talk about the relationship between parents and their sons, particularly mothers and their sons, and the impact that mothers and their lives have on the development of their sons into men. Today we have a very special guest on the show. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself to our viewing audience? Sure. My name is Abiose Joseph Cole. I'm a financial broker, recording engineer, author, songwriter, producer, man of many hats. Oh, extremely talented man. Thank you. Certainly. Uh, sir, would you say that um, you have a close relationship with your mother? Absolutely. Definitely. Definitely. So on, on, a, scale to, uh, on a scale of one to five, how would you say how, uh, how close you are with your mother? One being the best, five being the least? A one, definitely. A one? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great, that's great. Do you interact with your mother often? Well, absolutely. You see, when I was, um, when I was 15, my father passed away. And um, so since then, my mother, well, my mother and I have always been very close, but something like that kind of brings people a little bit closer. And so um, I've kind of taken it on myself to, um, work hard to make sure that I can take care of my mother in the same way that she took care of me for the first part of my life. So you're, you're, you provide for your mother? You're, 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 are you a caregiver or you just take the responsibility of helping your mother financially? Yeah, right now I'm helping her financially. Um, she's, she's fairly um, physically independent, you know, um, but in the future, you know, I, I will take more of a role in taking care of her as need arises. So you see that as her son, you see that as your role as she gets older, you want to be in that position to be able to make sure all her needs are met. Absolutely. Right, in her retirement and things of that sort. Absolutely. Well, that's, that's very admirable, you know, of a son. Um, just curious, uh, why would you have that type of um, idea or ideology mm -hmm. about your role as a, as a man and being able to provide that type of role to your mother? I mean, did she instill that? type of concept in, in, in you? Well, yes and no. I think um, seeing my mother um, struggle with her mother, you know, where her mother is, um, isn't is far, but is um, it's a bit of a commute to get to her mother. And so um, she's not able, like in her in her twilight of her life, my, my grandmother is, is very um, needy and, is, and needs a lot of care. And, um, you know, particularly these last few months have been very trying on my mother in terms of moving back and forth between her mother and taking care of her own responsibilities. So um, seeing how my mother has struggled in taking care of her mother, I've kind of learned from that and, and tried to put myself in a better situation to where I can better take care of my mother than she was able to take care of her mother. Kind of like, you know, if we have children and we grew up in a certain type of lifestyle, we want better for our children, right? So it's, just, it's a similar type of thinking. Mr. Cole, how often do you actually uh, communicate with your mother? Oh, uh, daily, definitely. Every day you speak mm -hmm. to your mother? Definitely. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Would you say that the uh, time that you spend with your mother, is it uh, quality time? Uh, is, it, is it the type of time that you would say is quality time 
Is it an enjoyable time? Definitely. Um, we spend a lot of time. Um, I grew up in a very um, spiritual and political house. So a lot of times when I'm with my mother, we're having, you know, political or spiritual conversations about different things that are happening in the world at the current situation or the current events. Oh, you discuss a lot of current events with your absolutely, mother? Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We love The Daily Show. That's one of our, mm -hmm. our favorite shows. Would you say that your mother is uh, influential in passing on things to you that have aided you or helped you become a mature man? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, one of the biggest lessons I learned from my mother because um, her, professionally, she's an advocate for children and families with disabilities. So one of the biggest um, things that I learned from her was more than tolerance, but the ability to, to see people. You know, um, what we see when we see uh, the physical nature of somebody is only 1%, if that, of who they actually are. You know, and so being around my mother and uh, the um, community that she's so involved in, it's helped me to really see people as they are and not necessarily as they may appear. Hmm. Can you recall a specific experience that you had with your mother that kind of helped you learn this epithet, this thing that she tried to teach you as far as um, how you look at people, how you visualize people? Absolutely. Um, I remember as a, as a youth, um, my mother was very close with a woman who had adopted um, some 15 children with disabilities. And I remember going to that home and um, spending time with some of those children, and some of those children were extremely disabled, but I was able to form a, a strong bond with these people, you know, and, and we were able to play and we were able to have fun in our own way, you know, in, in a manner that was, you know, conducive to their current situation. But regardless of the fact that they weren't able to do everything I was able to do, the things that we were able to do was very enjoyable. And so it taught me a valuable lesson very early that, you know, a situation is only what you make it, you know, and how you see it in your mind. If, if a situation is debilitating to you as an individual, then you're going to be debilitated. But if a situation is empowering to you as an individual, you're going to be empowered. Mm. How strong was your mother in terms of teaching you how to impact the challenges that you have in your life? Did, did she teach you to, to take charge over situations and to uh, face situations head on? Um, Absolutely, yeah. It was um, it's kind of a fearless approach. She, she, she's taught me to, to never be afraid, to go for it. You know, to, to, if you fall on your face, just get back up. You know, it's not about how many times you fail. It's about how many times you're willing to pick yourself up and keep moving. You know, and it's, it's been a valuable lesson. So Definitely. your mother pretty much uh, didn't raise you to make excuses right. for your situation or for your circumstances. Exactly. I would imagine maybe she tried to teach you how you have to be able to create your own change. Absolutely. And make your own change in society. Very true. I, oftentimes I see a lot of young men, um, they always talking about different things in society and they always talking about things. A lot of times you hear them talking about other people. Right or right. what, what other people do, or yeah. they talk about, well, why, why I can't do this, or why I'm mm -hmm. not able to do this, and they blame this person, they blame that person. And a lot of times, they don't ask themselves the question, mm. what am I, what, what do I have to do with this situation? Right. What can right. I do to change the situation? Right. How do I better myself mm -hmm. to change the situation, or to change something in the society? Or, you know, they don't necessarily see themselves as a, the main element to change the situation. Absolutely. So, I mean, I think that's great. Your mother imparted that idea in your life for you to take responsibility for your life, your own existence, mm -hmm. and you be the main agent in your life to bring forth change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a very mm -hmm. strong message for a mother to teach a, a, young, a young man. Definitely. You, know, you, won't, you won't live life going through life passively. Right. You know, it's right. great. Right. It's great. Right. 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 So would you say that you could actually talk to your mother about anything? Actually, yeah. I mean, I, I, I feel confident I can talk to my mom about absolutely anything. It wasn't always that way. You know, I think um, the older you get, the more you realize that your parents really care about you. You know, they're not just trying to discipline you and this, that, and the third, but that they really want to see you successful. And the more that you um, accept that the more open you can be with your parents. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard this uh, saying that the way a man 
is, a, or a young man is raised by his or her mother, has a lot to do with the way he interacts with women in his life. Definitely. You, definitely. Do you think there's truth to that statement? Absolutely. I think the way an individual is raised in general has a big impact on how he interacts with people. And the mother, I mean, the mother and the father together make such a, um, a unique yin and yang for an individual that it creates a certain type of balance in that person where they can mm -hmm. interact with people very effectively because mm -hmm. they've seen human interaction that was so effective you know and um, I think that's why in the Bible it's so stressed that um, that the family union be maintained because of that yin and yang nature between a mother and a father and, right. and the necessity for a child to see both levels of interaction you know the father is the one to kind of be pushy and to strengthen that independence in an individual whereas the mother is the one that you can kind of lean on when you need that support you know and so I think both aspects are very important when a child is here. Well Mr. Cole you mentioned uh, earlier that um, you could pretty much ask your mother or discuss anything with your mother. Mm. Um, growing up as a young man uh, could you talk to your mother about, let's say, topics like sex? Did you have a conversation with your mother about sex and sexuality? Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Not so much until I was out of high school. Um, I think prior to that, it was a little too taboo for me as an individual to talk to my mom about that. But later on, you know, um, me, my mom and I got very open on the topic. And it wasn't so much about sex as much as relationships, you know, and um, not wasting your time with people that aren't on your level. My mother was very strong about pushing me to find people that were on my level, not just in terms of a female companion, but in terms of any type of relationship, to not waste time with people that aren't challenging to you, that, that aren't able to have you know, intellectual conversations. I'm curious to, to know what a mother shares with her adult son about sexuality mm -hmm. or, or, or about sex. Sure. I mean, you know, like I said, you know, the, the emphasis was on finding the right partner, you know, and, and being with somebody that was challenging to you, somebody that, that you could raise a legitimate family with, that, that you would be able to, you know, cultivate children that were able to have these intellectual conversations as they get older. I think um, self-awareness and, and um, just mental consciousness in general is, is just not common enough in, 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 our, in our culture today. Mm -hmm. and. Um, so my mother really was uh, emboldened by that. So she spoke me. a lot with you about compatibility mm. in terms of like the choices of who you were to pick as a mate exactly. or someone to be in a relationship right. with. Right. You know, I think there are a lot of topics that I wonder whether or not uh, young men as they grow up, young boys as they grow up and they become, you know, they, they go through puberty, they go to adolescence and, you know, then they go into adulthood. I'm just wondering whether or not, you know, when in terms of building the relationships, whether we actually talk about hard topics with mm -hmm. our parents and whether mm -hmm. or not parents are taking the time out to talk about such topics. That's one of the reasons why I reference what would be the type of conversation you would have, you know, with your mother about uh, about sexuality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because often you don't hear about those type of conversations that mothers actually have with, with their sons. Right. Um, and I think to and my, I, I give I'll give one of my personal experiences. My yeah. mother told me something when I was growing up that was really, uh, I think, was very smart, though very simple. It was uh, she said that if I were to go and be involved with a woman sexually, she said wear protection. <laughs> and I and I remember that sometimes I laugh at that, like that you know that's 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 like one of the major things she talked to me right, about. Right, but right. from the perspective of a mother who cares for her son doesn't want her son to transmit a, a disease, disease or something that's or have children that, that was a, that was probably something that was very important mm -hmm. for her to say mm -hmm. so i mean a lot of times like uh people don't look at or, or some people don't realize or recognize what goes on in the bonding mm -hmm. between uh, a mother and her son and particularly what are the actual life lessons or teachings that are being imparted to the son based on that parent's lifestyle right how that person lives like you say you know like uh i know in a previous show i had with a gentleman he indicated that he saw his mother always being a hard worker mm. so he really understood the value of hard, hard work because yeah. he saw the type of things that she did mm -hmm. the fact that she sacrificed a lot for her family mm -hmm. in fact sacrificed for the children wanted to make sure that her children was always fed right so i mean uh, part of this show i want to kind of unearth some of the experiences that we have as as young men growing up 
and interacted with our parents and really make it real, what are the life lessons that we learn mm -hmm. from our parents? Mm -hmm. Can you recall any other experiences that you had um, with your mother and your development, your growth, where, where she imparted a, a, a life skill or lesson that helped you become a man? Absolutely. I think um, one of the biggest things that both of my parents were very strong about was respect, you know, and um, lack of respect wasn't tolerated in, in our household, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I remember very clearly one time, um, see, my mother and I are very similar in that um, we're very slow to anger, but the anger when it when it arrives is 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 pretty pretty aggressive and pretty fierce, you know. And um, I remember being maybe eight years old and um, pushing my mother to that point and uh, <laughs> get it, you know, get it picked up, put on the bed, and uh, and taught pretty well not to <laughs> disrespect again, you know. And my mother didn't have to do that often. It was very rare that my mother. You know, it would put hands on me. Typically, it was my father. You know, but um, my mother, like I said, was very slow to anger. But if if she was angry, you know, it was something that was legitimate. You know, and she would quickly express it. And so that's something that um that I've picked up. You know, not to be quick to anger, but to have justifiable anger and to express it in a way that comes across very clearly to whoever it is that you're speaking to and to always have respect. Well, you're speaking to a very specific characteristic that I think affects a lot of men mm -hmm. and males in general and people in general is how we deal with our emotions and mm -hmm. feelings and whether or not like, um, you know, we, we, how we express our anger, mm -hmm. you know, because a, a lot of people, particularly males, are challenged with how they deal with their own emotions, mm -hmm. their own feelings and their expression of anger. Um, in your words, Abiyose, um, what would you say are five characteristics that you would associate with a strong, mature man? Mm, five characteristics of a strong, mature man. I would say um, self-discipline is, is crucial, but even before that, of course, a spiritual foundation. You have to have a strong spiritual foundation. It doesn't really matter to me how you label that, you know, um, but it is very crucial in, in my perspective to have a strong spiritual foundation in order to be a strong individual because then you're not leaning just on yourself, but you're leaning on a greater power than you can even imagine. So, so that's one character. That's, that's the first, you know, and then secondly is the, is the self-discipline, I would think, to, to constantly develop that spiritual um, relationship that you have with your creator or that spirituality that spiritual nature within yourself you know to to have the self-discipline to to not take in things into your body and to not put out things into the universe that are detrimental you know mm -hmm. um, on, so on a wide scale self-discipline um, I would say another one is courage um, to to not be afraid you know and if you are afraid to move forward anyway and that's really what courage is courage isn't the absence of fear but it's the ability to proceed regardless of fear you know, and, and discipline isn't necessarily doing something, you know, just to do it, but it's doing something that you may not want to do because it needs to get done, you know. And mm -hmm. so those would be the first three. Um, so third would be courage. Courage, absolutely. A fourth, I would say, would be um, a, a willingness to, to try, you know. I don't know, it, it kind of falls under courage, but it's a little bit different. You know, the willingness to try is, it goes beyond courage. It goes um, to, to state that you want to, become the change that you see in the world you know what I mean to to know that you're great enough to do anything that you want to do you know and then so the fifth one is the self-awareness and, and really knowing who you are as an individual really knowing your capabilities go far beyond you know anything that anybody tells you there are no limits you right. know um, mind is the only limit and most people aren't willing to exercise the mind well enough to reach that limitless capability and those are very good characteristics. I would add to responsibility mm. and um, taking responsibility Absolutely. for one's life, mm -hmm. uh, one's actions, mm -hmm. one's mm -hmm. uh, community. Yeah, definitely. Uh, one's relationships. I agree 100%. So I really thank you, Mr. Cole, for uh, coming on the show. Oh, and the conversations pleasure. with Daryl. We it was appreciate definitely it. a pleasure. And uh, I want to thank the viewing audience for tuning in uh, on this episode of Candid Conversations with Daryl Fitzgerald Jr. And look forward to seeing you in the near future. Take care. God bless.